Hello everyone and welcome back. I was contacted a little while back by Buffer Software, a small team out of Czechia, who developed a historical game. I hadn't heard of this game, but when I took a look at some of the screenshots and trailers, its unique art style caught my eye. For full disclosure, I requested and received a review key from the team prior to release, but with no conditions attached. I was able to find and share a few bugs with the team, and for that they were kind enough to add me to the special thanks list. I'd like to wish them success with the game, because it's clearly a labour of love. This review was also based on a pre-release version, and there may be differences between that and the full release. So what is Artformer? The art in the name should be a pretty strong hint. It's a game set across various historical eras, with the story playing out within an artwork. Each of the four chapters draws the visual style from the art of the period. You start in the prehistoric era and cave paintings, then as an Egyptian in a papyrus in the nation, then on to Greek and foreign art, and finally on to Rome where you become a mosaic. You explore the world speaking to various characters in order to pick up and fulfill quests. Interspersed among the platforming exploration are puzzle sections where you recreate works of art and side-scroller sections. The exposition of the various art styles is arguably the strongest asset of the game. So how does the game play? From a mechanical perspective, Artformer is a platformer. You run, jump, climb and engage in combat in a way that seems to draw inspiration from games such as Prince of Persia. I should note that its focus is more on puzzle solving and storytelling than on action like you might find in games like Hollow Knight. One thing that may cause frustration is that sometimes traps and hazards may be present but can only be confirmed by risking death. This is particularly noticeable in sections involving hazards that are below you because visibility of lower levels is limited. You can gain visibility if you explore different tunnels but sometimes you just have to drop down and hope that you don't take too much damage or die instantly. The net effect is that if you go out of your way to explore every passage, you'll be replaying sections repeatedly. As I noted previously, this is not an action platformer and you should not expect controls to be as responsive as in games like that. There are small idiosyncrasies in the responsiveness that take some time to get used to. An early one that I had problems with is that running jumps require you to activate jump slightly earlier than the edge. Another one is in the side scrolling sections, where vertical movement is delayed. It may take a bit of time to get used to the controls, but you'll be fine once you do. The game introduces new mechanics as you progress through the chapters. In the Egyptian chapter, you encounter side-scrolling sections. In the Greek section, you'll encounter the inventory system and wear armor to protect you from attacks. Later on in Rome, you'll learn about money and be able to purchase your own gear. This helps the game avoid becoming stale and repetitive because there's always a new mechanic. What's the premise and story? Each chapter begins with an artist's hands drawing the scenery and the protagonist. It's a very nice little touch. The first thing that stands out is the artistic style. For this chapter, it's quite minimalistic. The lighting provides a nice contrast and slight movements of elements like trees adds life to the scenery. And the occasional splashes of color from other creatures prevents the visuals from being stale. You start off in the prehistoric era as a young warrior undergoing rites of adulthood. You'll be introduced to the combat system and learn about some of the dangers that tribal hunters might have faced.
Later on, you'll need to traverse a series of underground caverns as you seek a new home for your tribe, which will bring you across cave paintings. The depths at which some of these have been found in the real world shows that prehistoric man was delving very deep and the exploration aspects of the game reflect that. The story is linear and most of the choice is in whether you take up side quests or don't bother with them. Each quest can only be fulfilled in one way and you should not expect a narrative with multiple outcomes. The gameplay is broken up by occasional jigsaw puzzle sections where you recreate art pieces from the period. These sections are more about showing you things rather than presenting a challenge in themselves. As you progress through the game, you'll unlock encyclopedic entries that cover the historical and artistic background the game is based on. It's a nice little add-on that you can use to learn more if you'd like to. Audio is usually complementary to the mood of the game without being intrusive. Combat will have its own combat music and there'll be other music to suit such as drum beats during chapter 1. However, there are cases where the game, particularly when it travels through the underground passages, where you'll have long stretches of silence. Maybe a wider variety of sound effects and music would have broken up the monotony. The second chapter is set around the reign of Ramses II, who's famous for his participation in the Battle of Kadesh. That's a battle that took place against the Hittites at around 1300 BC and is the earliest battle that we have actual historical records about. Things are more colourful and the background takes on a papyrus-like quality. You'll have to make your way to the palace, past thugs and guards, but only to find that the pharaoh has died. You'll oversee the journey of his body to the tomb in a side-scroller minigame where you dodge obstacles and defeat wild animals with your bow. Once the pharaoh has entered the afterlife, you must physically escape the tomb in a manner that resembles the underground journey of the first chapter. The third chapter sees you play the part of Odysseus Famous as one of the heroes in Homer's Iliad. You'll take part in the siege of Troy and meet many of the other heroes like Achilles. The art style is based on paintings on amphorae, wine jars of the Greek classical period with black backgrounds and reddish foregrounds. As you might expect from the setting, combat plays a much greater part than in previous chapters. Combat is between you and a single opponent but a nice little touch is the way how the warriors move and fight in the background, which gives the scenes more dynamism than your fight alone would provide. A new gameplay feature is added in the form of inventory. You get a few pieces of armor as a reward, but they can't be replaced if they break. However, it's nice to see them reflected in the visuals. There's a nice little easter egg to be found in this chapter that I appreciated. Polis means city by the way. Hopefully this won't spoil things for anyone, but Troy will eventually fall and you'll return home victorious. But anybody who's familiar with the Iliad will know that the return journey was no stroll through the park for Odysseus. You'll have to escape the Cyclops. That with the witch. And finally see off the suitors looking to take over your home. There's a nice little touch in how Odysseus's dog is waiting at the docks for his return. Overall, the Greek chapter will probably be the strongest if you know something about Homer's epic. In the final chapter, you rise from a young orphan to become a famed gladiator during the rule of Sulla. The art style is based on Roman mosaics and many of the features of the time are reflected in the game. You'll get to see baths and aqueducts 
and get to partake in games at the Coliseum. The game expands on the inventory system by adding money and allowing you to purchase your own gear to either replace broken parts or improve your kit. You win money by helping various citizens in the city and winning one of the gladiatorial games that take place every so often. Combat is the same as in previous chapters, but chariot races can be a little frustrating because you have very limited vision. It's difficult to avoid obstacles since you have to push the pace although other races also seem to have the same problem. This chapter involves a lot more exploration and platforming, and as your fame rises, you'll be drawn into the intrigue of the Eternal City. Delving into the shady underworld as you keep your allies safe from assassination, and even meeting the dictator himself. The game as a whole should take you somewhere between 10 to 15 hours to finish if you do all the missions and explore all the nooks and crannies. So who's going to enjoy this game the most? One thing that I'd like to say is that not all people who play games will enjoy all games. Different games have strengths in different facets of gaming. Artformer is a game that will best appeal to those who appreciate unique visual styles. Each chapter will have its own distinct style that conveys a sense of period. You'll come across a lot of interesting little details. It will also appeal to those who may have some familiarity with the periods in question, because the historical references abound. This is particularly strong during the Trojan chapter, if you have any degree of knowledge about the Iliad. Overall, this is a game that would suit someone looking for a nice relaxing experience. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.